Green Harbor Waterfront Lodging is nestled in a woodland setting on a picturesque ocean inlet. Green Harbor offers so much for a fun-filled yet affordable family waterfront vacation. Enjoy our private boating beach with ramp and dock, free rowboats and paddle boats, oversized heated outdoor pool and kiddie pool. You'll enjoy our attractive waterfront and beachside accommodations. So visit us online at gogreenharbor.com. Call our meeting to order. We are now in open session, having returned from executive session. I'll in invite Ryan to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, announcements. Uh, Thank my board for being able to reschedule and be here on Thursday night after our Monday night mm -hmm. snowstorm. Right now. Uh, we have had to reschedule a number of our public hearings that were scheduled for Monday. We are reposting them. They'll be in the paper posted tomorrow, and they'll appear on our February 22nd agenda. Any other announcements? Does anyone like to make public comment? We may do so at this time on any item that's not on our agenda for this evening. Next item are minutes. We have the minutes from the open session Monday, January 25th. Uh, you said we've already had some revisions to these. And so I think 
we had already actually had approved these with the revisions. But just to clarify and make sure we hadn't, can I have a motion to approve them as we have? So moved. Second. Motion and a second to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. On the executive session minutes, there are a few other th corrections that I was going to, and I think uh, Mr. Patterson also wanted to submit in writing and have them come back to us with, with revisions. So, so hold those. we'll hold those. Okay. That's all. Okay. Under administrative orders, um, I'll read them, and if you want to hold any, uh, please let me know. Uh, the first was to approve an Eversource petition to install one four inch conduit in two hand holes on 59 Oyster Pond Road. The second is to approve an Eversource petition to install one four inch conduit in two hand holes on 186 Hundy Road. Third is to vote the Cultural District Letter of Endorsement and Resolution. All. Next is to authorize a letter to the Mass DEP asking for a public hearing on the Steamship Authority 401 WQC permit. E is to authorize a letter of support for House Bill 39044 and related this is protective custody for overdosed individuals. All. F is to authorize expenditure from Council on Aging donation account for the $4,000 consultant fee for school field analysis. Uh, I'm going to hold the F. Uh, G is the signed discharge of mortgage. This is something that actually came up in the fall. The Family Housing Rehab Program for 109 Homestead Lane. And H is to approve request for expenditure in the amount of $1,508.82 from the No Place for Hate donation account for the Martin Luther King breakfast. So we had a hold on C and E, e and F. Correct. All right. Um, I understand a motion to approve all the others that were not held. Motion to approve A, B, D, G, and H. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. All right. Mr. Patterson, you would want to talk about the cultural district letter of endorsement? Just very briefly, um, because we just attended a... a a meeting that in actually was a briefing from the, uh, get my notes here, uh, from uh, the Massachusetts Cultural Council uh, representative, uh, who's Mary Jenkins, uh, giving the um, local community a, a sense of what the cultural district is all about and what the benefits would be, um, and basically touting the fact that it adds to the economic vitality of the community because of the tourism it brings in, but also adds to the, the quality of life and the culture that it tends to promote. Um, and I think there definitely is an active group that uh, would like to pursue this. I am a little puzzled by the fact that it appears as though the, the town is applying for this uh, cultural district classification, and we would assume the sort of management and administrative responsibilities. I, I, I just wanted Julian to have a chance to respond to that as well, because he was at the briefing very, we were only there for a very short period of time. But it, is there going to be an overhead on the town that creating such a district would create? And it, it's a question, it's not a prediction <coughs> of it. Yeah, um, Selectman Patterson, thank you, and uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, as you note, I was there for the uh, 20 minutes or so we were able to stay, as, as were other members of the board. Um, as I recall, it was noted by the uh, Mass Cultural Council uh, representative that the designation uh, for in five-year increments uh, comes to the municipality. And uh, so indeed, um, that is the format. It would be my hope, and uh, I think some additional discussions uh, will be forthcoming to help further define that. It would be my hope that uh, one or more um, nonprofit entities involved in this uh, would be uh, stepping forward, uh, perhaps akin to or similar to the circumstances we've experienced uh, with the licensing for Nopska Light. So they, they would step forward in support of the municipality's initiative uh, mm -hmm. because it would be a win-win, obviously, for cultural organizations, uh, the community as a whole, etc., uh, and that we could work in a partnership. And I think that um, Falmouth has given ample evidence of having done that on multiple occasions and mm -hmm. it would be my hope that we would be able to embrace that again. But uh, you're right, Selectman Patterson, the, uh, needs to be some more meat put on the bones. I, I would agree with you there. Ms. Swin? 
Well, I, yeah, I, I think true, but I think the fact that the, by designating the district, it's part of the town. It, it's, it's determining that this section of the town will be a cultural district and, and will be in a position to receive grants and other kinds of um, uh, money. But I think the other important thing it, it reaffirms is that arts and culture are the economic driver to this community. I mean, I know of no other town on Cape Cod that has all the vast opportunities to experience the arts and the culture anywhere that people are offered in this town. And it is by far, to me, the, the biggest economic driver that we have. And, and this helps us to recognize that and to say to people, yes, it is our economic driver, and therefore we are creating this, this district that continues to support that because the return to our economy is just huge. And so that's why I, I think it's like a no-brainer. I don't think it commits us to anything in the way of funding, but it, it, it sends a huge message out there that this is what we are about and it creates the opportunities that we can um, build on the economy and create more incentive for people to come here and help our, our uh, community increase and, and it's an investment in a sense so. um, I just counted 10 organizations in this list that are interested in this and I really think it goes the same way um, as planning for the uh, lighthouse I think it's the the very same theme I think it's the same same recipe and as you would look at each one of these organizations, there's a, I mean, there are people who definitely would be dedicated to this. So I never thought of it as a town project. I thought of it more as the people involved uh, would be doing it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Well, Jeff, lest I be accused of throwing a wet blanket on this, <laughs> I am very much in favor of this. But I, I thought it was important that, that the community realize that, you know, this is something where, like the Nob Friends of Nobska Light, this is going to take a really a groundswell of support from people and people shouldering the, respons the administrative responsibility because I don't think it can just be pushed onto our town manager's staff uh, or the planning board necessarily. Uh, it's going to have to be the community at work, and they're the ones that started this initiative in the first place, so I, I'm pretty confident that that will also happen. Uh, just um, want to recognize Roger and Judy Day, who have really mm -hmm. been... Um, responsible for moving this ahead and also Beth Colt has participated in meetings with us and I want to suggest that this is the type of project that the EDIC could be instrumental in because if one of the reasons to move ahead with the cultural district is economic so it's something that the Chamber of Commerce is interested in as well as um, for the economic development of the town and sustainability, which is the main mandate of the EDIC. So that's um, just one more possibility I wanted to mention in terms of administrative and um, monetary assistance. And just one more comment. It keeps people in this community totally engaged. Mm -hmm. I mean, for people who are even older and maybe have more time on their hands, they are, I, I was interviewed by somebody from the league yesterday. They're doing a project now on, on the Falmouth economy. And so it's all very fresh in my mind. But it's opportunities for people who live here to become really engaged and they can do almost anything that they're interested in because, because uh, the, it, it's, it's not only appreciated, but it also um, helps them and gives them the opportunity to to utilize their interest and their experience and to benefit the town. So I just think it's all kinds also. of good things. It does give organizations and the town the ability to tap into some other sources yes. of funding. There are some towns that needed sidewalks put in, and they were able to mm -hmm. tap into some other funding to be able to... From the state, to, right. From the state to be able to take advantage of that. And so it does have that benefit. We are committing that we are going to be willing to have a town official appointed to the committee. That's one of the commitments we are making. Well, I think one of the other things um, is the fact that there was no deadline. I thought that as a town worked and accumulated money and got to the next step, it wasn't as if everyone was very nervous that in six months we have to have this written and we need a certain amount of money. 
I really thought their, their rules were very easy to follow just in the short time that we were there. Any other discussion? Anyone okay. from the public? Just, public? just very briefly, just um, you kind of taps on it, but really when, if we talk about it, cultural, just culture is community. And I think that's kind of what Pat is suggesting. But uh, you can't be an artist or a musician by yourself. I mean, you can, but it's really the sharing and the feedback that you get and in participating in a community of, our, of sim people in the similar arts that really makes this worthwhile and sharing that with the community at large. So I'm very much in favor of this. Okay. okay. I'm going to mo make a motion that we vote the Cultural District Letter of Endorsement and Resolution. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. Okay. Next item is uh, to authorize a letter of support for the House Bill 390. That's E. That's e. what he's oh, talking about. Oh, that was, yeah. no, that, no, he's doing oh, it now. Oh, you're doing it now. Okay. Sorry about that. Mr. Patterson? Yes. Um, you re received in our, your packet a, a letter from the Massachusetts Chiefs of Pol a Police Association uh, with a similar letter that supports this. Uh, you may recall I reported having gone up to the House during their deliberation of their bill on uh, opiate abuse and what the state can do to basically support the efforts to try to mitigate the, uh, the problems that are being created by opiate abuse. Um, it seems to me that uh, we need to step forward and basically say as a town, you know, we support the state's efforts in this regard. And a similar level, level for coming out of a municipality is just adding to, you know, to, to the deliberation, if you will. It's in conference committee, so there's a Senate version and a House version. But there are pressures uh, to, to not allow police or even physicians to uh, detain a person who has just come out of an overdose for a period of time to allow them to get their wits about them, you know, to be detoxed to the extent that they can actually think rationally. Um, I did put into your mailboxes a, a paper from the uh, um, New England Journal of Medicine that actually really does a good job of explaining how addiction of all kinds, you know, whether it's alcohol or tobacco or overeating uh, or, you know, some kind of prescription drug, has a physiological basis for it. And there are some people who are certainly more susceptible to addiction than others. It's an excellent paper. It's not totally uh, medicine technology. It's more of a functional paper that explains how research has shown us that the different parts of the brain develop at different rates, particularly among new, uh, young people, that executive function that allows you to anticipate the impact on the future of short-term decisions, all that comes later, particularly in males. Um, but all these factors, I think, feed into the fact that detaining a person for a period of time after they have overdosed and were brought into the emergency room is really an important measure. It's done for uh, uh, alcohol, for somebody that's uh, intoxicated with alcohol. The police are allowed to detain them until they sober up so that they're not going to go out and hurt themselves. And so the the uh, proponents of this holding period are basically saying we want to do the same thing for somebody that's, uh, that's had an opiate overdose situation. So I would just uh, ask that you think about providing a similar letter, letter to that of the Massachusetts Chief of Police Association, uh, asking the, the, the Senate and the House uh, <coughs> to create a bill that creates the opportunity for someone to make a decision that it would be appropriate for this person to be held for 24 hours or 48 hours, depending on um, you know what, what the best advice is that the house can be given. So that's the issue. So any other questions? Well, I would move that we authorize the the chair and the town manager to draft a, a, a letter similar to uh, the Massachusetts Chief of Police Association uh, in support of a detaining period for citizens who suffer from an overdose of an opiate. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. So we'll get right on that. Okay, the next item is the authorized expenditure from the Council on Aging Donation Account. Uh, this is uh, for $4,000 in consultant fee for school field analysis. And this is uh, looking at uh, where we're going to put the 
replacement field for when the senior center moves to the high school field area. Have we heard anything from the idea? I think it was what we were hoping that we could do a split with this money and the school department to fund it. Um, I'm not sure where we stand. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I did have a meeting with uh, several school representatives and uh, um, pleased that uh, Superintendent uh, Nancy Taylor confirmed uh, that they would uh, match the town's contribution. Uh, so the school, both the school and the town have ownership in the outcome of that analysis. As you noted, relocating, uh, the mandatory relocation of that soccer field <laughs> needs to be properly costed and that information made available both to the selectmen, the school committee, and ultimately to uh, the finance committee and town meeting uh, as part of the uh, deliberations for the spring. And we'll be taking up those Warren articles later in this meeting. So uh, we're pleased that we have a partnership in that cost sharing and look forward to that uh, being concluded in time for town meeting. Great. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Mm -mm. I'll make a motion to authorize the expenditure from the Council on Aging donation account for $4,000 consultant fee for school field analysis in connection with the senior center. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. All right, special events. We have the, Fall, uh, the Flag Day 5K Walk Run, Fall of Heights, on Sunday, June 12th, 2016. Make a motion to approve. Second. As, as, um, as printed, right? With the, as printed. With the conditions yeah. yep. specified? Right. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. Uh, the next is a wedding ceremony. This came to us in the fall. And at that time, we weren't sure of the, we not received the application for the um, road race. And this is for the Merrifield wedding on Saturday, August 13th, 2016. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. Next item is discussion of the request to extend the review period uh, for the Liberty Commons. Uh, we have received a letter uh, from Liberty Green suggesting their Chapter 40B proposal for the property at Lantern Lane. And there's a lot more information coming up, which is the reason why I had requested that we discuss writing a letter to the Mass Housing asking for uh, at least a 30-day extension. Usually we get 30 days from when we receive the information to give them a response or some feedback. And I think it's appropriate to ask for a little bit more time so we can have a lengthier discussion about the proposal in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So move. We'll request a 30-day extension for the DC. Okay. Okay. Can, yep. can we do some discussion on the letter that we received? Sure. Um, uh, who will, will it be the Zoning Board of Appeals that will actually be responsible for this 40B application and the, the review process? So My understanding is they would be involved in that, yes, be in that review. Okay. Mm -hmm. I note that there appears to be some money available to engage a qualified third-party consultant to work on this. Or would we anticipate uh, requesting that from the, the development, oh, from Mass Housing? Well, we can do so. I, I think if we get the 30-day uh, extension, which I mentioned to uh, uh, Chairman Jones, that the representation has been that uh, with the board's uh, request, we would be able to secure that, uh, that uh, the board could discuss that at greater length at your next meeting okay. and uh, therefore determine whether you want to seek that additional assistance. I can tell you that uh, uh, town planner Brian Curry has been involved in a... Uh, <coughs> A, uh, drafting and analysis that is continuing to be underway and uh, I anticipate you know bringing that to the board for further discussion at your next meeting if that's desirable mm -hmm. um, and again we can supplement that further I do know that um, uh, Brian by experience is uh, uh, has considerable uh, background in this area and I have great confidence in his analysis <coughs> uh, but we're still able to supplement that and be happy to discuss it and the reason why I'm looking for the 30 days is we would have time on the 22nd to be able to look at Brian's letter, discuss that, and send it in within the 30 days. But I think there may be additional input that we want to have 
above and beyond what he has done in looking from the planning issue mm -hmm. as, a, as opposed to a wider town issue. And that's why I want to make sure we have time okay. to be able to have that conversation also. Okay. Okay. Well, just from reading uh, what, what I read in the newspaper, um, and is um, the project is considerably different from the previous project. It's probably larger. And it also calls for underground parking. And I don't know whether that means under the building or in the ground. You know, we don't know that. And that would be important to know. Um, and, and the size, it exceeds, the, I think, the height limit. I, I believe it's three stories that we usually have 35. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if this exceeds that 35 or not. So I think in order to even have a discussion, we have to have that kind of information. Because um, uh, the size would dictate that. Um, well, the plans for this are in the planning office. They are. Mm -hmm. And they've been there, I think, now for a week and a half. Um, so it's and it, there, with the Chapter 40B, there are some limitations as to really what, what input we, can do. we officially can right. do, but we can write a letter, and I want to make sure we have enough time to be able to draft that letter appropriately, which is the reason okay. I'm suggesting okay. include. Okay. Yep. Mr. Yes, Mr. I was to mention, I actually went, um, Diane Davidson has a copy of that folder full of, of it, and there is an architectural rendering of what this uh, development would look like in there, so I would invite you to take a look. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Anyone well, I, well, I just would say that if those uh, documents are there, I think probably members of the public would want to review them as well, but particularly before we discuss yes. it, so that we can get the community input that we need. Well, they're in, in the planning board office for public viewing, mm -hmm. and they have to be allowed mm -hmm. that way. Okay. 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 Any other comments? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of requesting a letter of support for the 30-day extension? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None of the eyes have it. So we'll work on that one also. We'll do. Lots of letters. All right. Next door, we have some committee interviews. Mr. Chairman, can I just interject? Yep. If we're able to secure that without the need to transmit a letter, uh, that would be agreeable, I presume, as long as we have that result. Sure. We may be able to handle it with an email, for instance. Uh, right. So uh, I think these things are um, not a matter of routine, but, but not terribly complex either as far as a simple extension. I thought it might be an opportunity to educate um, the state on the things that we're looking at. So well, either, think, either way. I think that's the letter that we're going to be, uh, from Brian, that's going to come out on the 22nd. Okay. We'll give them that chance. I think this is just making sure that we have the, time have the 30 do days to deal with time. Okay. The 30 extra days. All right. Uh, first of the Community Preservation Committee, we have two vacancies. These are two terms ending on June 30th, 2017. And we have three applicants. Paul Glenn, Eileen Wiskell, and James Morse. And if we could uh, hear from you in that order, uh, we'd ask you to come forward, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit why you'd like to be on the committee, and then we may have some questions for you to help us in our deliberation. Mr. Glenn. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So my name is Paul Glenn. Um, I wasn't born in Falmouth, but I've been here for a long time. My uh, initial connection is Benny Ines, who was the uh, veterans agent for the town of Falmouth for a long time when I was a, when I was a young lawyer. And um, he married my aunt, and we've been coming down here since the, the 50s, really. So I, I know Falmouth pretty well. In, over in Falmouth Heights, I have a, a mother-in-law, a sister, and my wife's uncle. In East Falmouth, I have my brother, um, his daughter, a cousin of my wife, and another cousin that's buying a house over there. So. I, the reason why I want to be on, I want to be involved with the um, with the town. You know, it's nice to be part of it. I live, I, you can see my house almost from from here, and and um, I, I like to be involved with the town. I've um, been involved really with all of the issues that the CPA deals with, whether it's um, been a real estate lawyer for a long time, and. Um, I've had a lot of experience with uh, historical preservations. We have a, a building where our office is that's um, built in 1767. We refurbish that. We've done that with a few other properties too. So I, you know, I, I like that idea of the historic um, preservation. I've been involved with affordable housing uh, a little more actively the last 15 years or so. Um, when I was a young lawyer, 
I got involved with many things at the town hall with the town. I was on the housing authority. I was a, I, um, I was a uh, town meeting member, and I was on the human services committee for a while too. After we got married, kids, I, I uh, as my terms expired, I uh, became a coach. I think that's pretty much what I've been involved with for a long time. Now I'd like to get reinvolved um, with the town, you know, and. Um, I've gone to a couple of meetings, and um, one reason was to, so I could say that to you tonight, but another reason just to make sure, um, you know, I thought I'd enjoy it. I think it's a great group of people, and um, I, I think I'll be able to get along with them and, and have some something positive to do for the town of Falmouth, you know. Is that enough? Yep, I'm sure we'll have some questions. Ms. Moffitt? Okay. Uh, you answered a few of them as uh, as you were talking, and I guess one that I always ask: Do you know any of the members on the CPC? Well, well sure. I, I mean, I've got to know Virginia the last okay. couple of. Yeah, I've known Sandy. Um, we were lifeguards together a few years ago. Uh, Sandy Dufresne, and uh, you said two years ago. <laughs> and and I, I I know the. Uh, you know, I'm drawing a blank on his uh, name. He's on the planning board. I talk to him all the all Ralph. the time. Uh, what? Ralph. No, Paul. no, We're not Paul Ralph. Uh, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Paul. Uh, and I think I know a couple of other. And the nine all. So there'd be only, if there are two of, there are only seven. So I, I don't know them all. I don't know them all, but I know some of them. And you've had, <coughs> uh, you've been a member of other committees in the town. You know, not for. Uh, not for a, um, a long time, you know, back in the early 80s. Uh, I was a member of the Falmouth Housing Authority. Uh, I was a member of the Falmouth um, Human Services Committee, and I was a town meeting member. Uh, I've, I followed the progress of the CPA. Uh, I followed its passage by the, by the state legislature pretty much on a daily basis back, it was a while ago, you know, well, Paul, I think one of the things that um, I have noticed personally is that we have made a lot of decisions about people on different committees, and we also have a lot of vacancies. And sometimes uh, when we read the, their application or we know a little bit about them, we'll find out at a, a time later that they just weren't a team player. They just weren't with whatever is, um, is in cooperation and getting things done for the town. And that's a very important thing. So I, I'm coming to the point of just simply saying to you, you get along well with people, and I'm sure you wouldn't just say, oh, absolutely. But it has been an issue on some of our committees, and it's not a pleasant thing that is happening. And our responsibility in appointing someone is that everybody is agreeable and listens to other opinions, even though they may not be your own. And um, and I'm just, I don't know you personally. I've read everything here about you. I'm very impressed with your background. And I think you would be, but I just need a little reassurance that um, you're a team player there. Well, pretty much what I do every day is uh, try to bring people together. You know, that that's uh, probably 50% of, um, of, of my time is spent talking to people that don't quite agree in the price. I have some type of conflict, and uh, I and I I try to bring people together. So I'm just used to that, and I think I've in um, working with clients over the years. I probably have learned that even if I do disagree with somebody, I definitely have trained myself. If it's not my nature to begin with, I've trained myself that you know, okay, okay. you you disagree and. Um, and well, you, end, yeah. you understand my purpose of the question. Oh, you see it nationally, and I, I hate it when you see it in the town, right? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Mr. Preston, any question? Sure. Uh, Paul, of the uh, four areas that projects come through under the CPC, which is the one that you think you'd most gravitate toward? Because uh, each of the CPC members ends up being a liaison yeah. to a project. Uh, and is responsible for tracking it and reporting on its progress. So which, which of the four, conservation, well, affordable housing, historic preservation, or recreation, do you feel like you would most want to be involved in? You, you know, 
I, all of them a little bit. I, I think I would go with the guidance of the chairman at the beginning. I, I understand the CPA, and I, I really have paid attention to it, e even it's its passage way back. But I don't understand the particulars of it quite yet, you know, so I think I would, uh, you know, if the chairman says, Paul, we need somebody to take care of this project, you know, that's what I would, that's what I would do, right? Yeah. Um, Really, all of them. I mean, it's all. It's a nice. It, it it it's. It was a nice act to be passed. It gives the town a little extra money to spend on things that. I, I look at it as there's not a natural constituency for it. it you know, the. It, it's not like you're looking for a fire truck or you're looking for a new school. It, it's these things that. Uh, well, Falmouth does. Falmouth does pretty much have a natural. Con constituency for everything. <laughs> you know, the, when, when it was passed, most towns don't have a 300 committee. In fact, very few. And, and that was one of the purposes of it, to provide some funding for these things that uh, wouldn't be funded otherwise. No one makes money from, um, from open space. People aren't going to pay a fee for it. There's, there's a hard way to, um, to, to get that funded. We, we had our own 300 committee, which is good, but the rest of the state didn't. So we, that, that's, that's what I like about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yes. yes. Um, under the um, CPC legislation, um, said 10 percent of the funds have been directed to affordable housing. Right. So how do you, know, under, knowing what you yeah. know about the community when you've been here a long time, how would you see that the CPC could best use those funds for meeting the affordable housing needs here in Falmouth? And what are some of those needs that, that huh. as you see them? <clears throat> what are some of the needs for affordable? Yeah. Th that that would that would take a long uh, right, yeah. right well right. you know two or three or four yeah. ballpark um, numbers figures. But but I you know it it's a fair amount of money that goes through the CP mm -hmm. CP. See, it's not insignificant, but you know, to answer the first question first would be I, I'd see it more as an ability to leverage um, leverage things, the amount of money that we would have. You know, I think that's what Bob Murray did very well with the issue. You know, he had a little bit of my money, and he got money from either banks or other people to do more things. I don't think the CPC. Um, has the expertise to be a developer in, in anything like that. I, I mean, that that I, I don't see the CPC going out and buying a parcel of land and putting affordable housing on it. it you know, that's a full-time job for some. There are other there are other agencies that can do that, but you know, some of that money can be used to leverage more units than you could buy with just the with just the money. I mean, that's that's how I see it. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we hear from Eileen Miskell. Thank you, my name's Eileen Miskell. I first came to Falmouth in 1973, graduated from Falmouth High School a couple years ahead of Doug. Came back um, in 1986 with my husband to run our family business, Wood Lumber. Uh, raised two children who are now um, off somewhere else, and last year I, uh, with two partners, bought eight cousins. So for the last 30 years, I've been a business owner and um, involved in the community. Most of my community work has come um, in the philanthropic arena, and for the last um, seven or eight years, I've been chairing the Falmouth Fund of the Cape Cod Foundation, and in that capacity, we've been reviewing, raising money for uh, uh, different things uh, in the community and making grants to nonprofits that work in the community. So um, that money is a much more limited pool compared to the uh, the funds that run through the CPC, so um, or the CPA. Um, so between my business background and my work with the Falmouth Fund, I thought that um, this would be an opportunity to use those skills to review the. Uh, types of projects that come through the committee and um, hopefully bring many more positive projects to Falmouth as we've seen in the last several years. Okay. Ms. Buffett, do you want to start off with some questions? Well, I think once my question is out of the bag, you could probably be prepared for it. 
But I think the, uh, the point is that all committee members respect the other committee members. And um, in the different committees that you have worked on, tell me what's your personality on those committees? What's it like? Well, I specifically gave those people that I'd worked with in the references that I gave to you because mm -hmm. they can speak to what it's been like for me to be on a board with them. Um, it's, um, as you, one of you mentioned, it, it is right now seems to be a national epide epidemic where we can't quite listen to each other. So I do um, take what you say to heart and I have worked to be a good committee member in the past and I hope that I would do so in the future. Um, just say to me, how long have you lived in uh, Falmouth? Well, I came in 1973, but I've been back here for 30 years. I went, I graduated from high school, left for about 10 years to work and go to college, and then I came back in 1986. 86. So, okay. 30 years. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Patterson, can you ask your question, because that's mine also? <laughs> oh, <sure. laughs> Eileen, of the four project areas, conservation, affordable <laughs> housing, historic preservation, and recreation, which one are you likely to gravitate toward in terms of volunteering as, as a liaison to a project? I, I have to follow Paul on that. I, you know, whatever I'm asked to do, I'm happy to do. I don't have a particular one. Um, clearly, the affordable housing is, I think, the biggest and the most complex, as we've seen in projects that have been coming through town lately. Um, but I'd be willing to to take to take that on. I've seen it in a different number of areas. I have children in the 20s, um, so I understand the challenges we have there. I guess I'm going to, I will uh, piggyback on that one a little bit. And it's not completely related to the CPC, but just I'm curious about your expertise with what the historic preservation is going to do with different kinds of materials that they can use and are limited to use. <laughs> and I think that you could be very useful to bring that expertise and say, hey, what's out there right now that isn't, that's man-made is actually better along, I mean, I'm putting words into your mouth, but I'll let you finish up that sentence. I, I, I know, um, this is a public meeting, I have to be careful. Um, <laughs> as, well, as my husband would say, if it was available in 1600, we might have used it, right? wouldn't we? I think the biggest challenge with historical preservation is that um, we, we put a lot of financial burden on people interested in doing these projects, and we have to find the balance. We have to find the balance between preserving them and making them so expensive that nobody wants to buy historic property anymore. So um, that's that where I see the challenge. Mm -hmm. Ms. Flint, any other questions? No, you, you gave my question the, uh, <laughs> um, the comments that I appreciate. Thank you on affordable housing. All right. Thanks, Eileen. Okay. I'm James Thank you. Morse. Uh, good evening. My name is James Morse. Uh, I currently live in West Falmouth for approximately two years. Uh, my family has had a house in Falmouth for four generations in Woods Hole, uh, down at the beginning of Penzias Point. My parents' first house was in uh, the Heights. They bought in 1978 and then later moved to Megansett. Uh, I moved back to Falmouth two years ago from Martha's Vineyard, where I lived for uh, 19 years before that. Uh, I've been looking for a way to get involved here in town. You may recall I was before the, uh, the Board of Selectmen, I think a little over a year and a half ago, for the appointment to the uh, Steamship Board of Governors. Uh, kind of wondering, familiar face, who is this guy? Uh, as I stated, I, I work two different jobs. I'm currently a police detective with the Oak Plus Police, and I commute over to Martha's Vineyard four days a week, uh, working the weekends. Um, I'm also an attorney. I have a law practice here in Falmouth. Uh, my office is in the uh, Homeport. Uh, we're on Jones Road. Uh, I practice a uh, variety of different topics, uh, primarily litigation uh, and some consulting. Uh, I've done some projects of, uh, for historical preservation and so on and land use before. Uh, I've served on some nonprofits and some town boards, both on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, currently on the board of directors of a $20 million family foundation in Worcester, whose uh, historic focus right now is on uh, working on underage delinquency and at-risk girls. Uh, so I've kind of got a somewhat unusual and diverse background. As I stated, I'm looking for a way to get involved uh, here in the town of Falmouth. Uh, the CPC, I was approached by a former member of the CPCA, or CPA, uh, encouraging me to apply for the position. Uh, and it, the four focus areas are all things that uh, are somewhat dear to me, and I think very much important for people, because uh, they affect, well, affects everyone in town, but when it comes to affordable housing and so on, uh, it affects the kind of the two 
at-risk groups, both uh, seniors and younger folks who want to either stay in Falmouth or want to move to Falmouth. So, uh, but all four of the four focus areas are very much uh, near and dear to my heart. Ms. Buffett, it's up to you. Do you know uh, any of the members on the CPC? Currently, no. Uh, I know one of the former members. And have you gone to any of their meetings? I have not been to any of the ones here in Falmouth, but uh, I have been to previous uh, other municipalities that have resided in their meetings. Uh, you are not a town meeting member? No. No. Is that something you would be interested in? Yes, I'm planning on pulling papers. <laughs> okay. Soon? Yes. <laughs> at the end of the month. Okay. All right. And so you feel that your temperament and your disposition is that you would get along with the other committee members? I do. Uh, having worked on different boards, uh, I think it's very important to have it's, it's okay to have passionate debate, and reasonable people can differ. I believe over the time, over as I've got a little older, I've learned the art of tact, the ability to make a point without making an enemy. Um, mm -hmm. so, yes, okay. I generally consider myself a team player. Thank you. Well, I, I think you kind of broadly answered my question, which is which of those four project areas would be one that you might lean toward? Conservation, affordable housing, historic preservation, or recreation? Would you? They're all important. Yeah, they're all important. We know that. Uh, I would probably lean towards affordable housing would be my first priority or thing that is kind of most near, near and dear to my heart. Uh, only because, as I know, one of the discussion points, you can see what happens with 40B proposals if you don't have that threshold percentage of affordable units in your town. Uh, but I think it's very important. Uh, young people are getting squeezed off the Cape because they can't afford to live here. Seniors on fixed income find themselves getting squeezed off the Cape because they can't afford to pay for heating oil or propane and so on, uh, and keep, keep pace with cost of living here. So uh, preserving affordable housing units or finding ways to expand what's available is very important. Thank you. Answers my question. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Mr. Morse. All right. Thank you, Thank you, very, you much. very much. Thank you. So we do have uh, two positions and three applicants. Would the board like to try to make a decision tonight? Do we want to take this under advisement? Be ready to Move forward. Don't can do this. Mr. Well, I'm, it's, it's not a comfortable position to make, but I'm very comfortable with uh, m making the motion to appoint Paul Glenn and Eileen Miskell to the board there. Well, I would like to suggest that to we put all three names in nomination. Mm -hmm. oh, and in then nomination. Each, I see. Sure. And then, I mean, and that's what I would suggest. Them. I mean, yes. you can do that. Yep. We put all three, and then we all have a choice of choosing which ones we would oh. like instead of just limiting it to two. Mm -hmm. Is that all right with you? I defer to Thank you. Pat for the motion. <laughs> I'll second her motion. Okay. So a motion to put all three names into nomination. Mm -hmm. And a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And uh, I'll ask you to vote for two people when I call on you then. Oh, you want us to say two, two. immediately? Yep. Okay. So Out of the three. Okay. Not from some other no, name, please. No, no, I, no, I have to find their names again. <laughs> I, here. Paul Glenn, Eileen Miskell, and Jim Morris. It was Paul Glenn. There you go. Eileen Miskell. And Jim Morris. And Jim Morris. Okay. My uh, two votes are going to be Paul Glenn and Eileen Miskell. And that would be my two votes as well. Mine would be Eileen Miskell and Jim Morse. Mine would be Paul Glenn and Eileen Miskell. I'm going to concur with uh, Paul Glenn and Eileen Miskell, but I really hope that we can find a committee that Mr. Morse can join. <laughs> You're a fascinating person because you have such a wide range of interests. I really think there is a committee that we could be able to take advantage of. Unfortunately, I think you've come across two candidates that are um, I'm thrilled that we were able to get three people of your caliber to be willing to serve in these committees. Uh, but just uh, that I think Mr. Glenn and Ms. Go will also serve us very well. But thank you very much for applying. And so, I think we have a list of vacancies. <laughs> Please don't get discouraged. We, we could use your We skills. have a list of vacancies. Okay. All right, so congratulations to Eileen Misko and to Paul Glenn for being our two new members of the CPC. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Jim right. Morris, I'm going to give him this. That's a list of vacancies. Okay, Jim, hold on a minute. Thank you. We'd like to find a home for you.
Good if first you don't succeed, come back and bother selecting That's again. Right. Please do. <laughs> it's not a bother. All right, our next uh, interviews are for the Human Services Committee. We have two vacancies and we have two applicants. And just before we get started, I do want to point out that uh, we have an applicant who is applying for, or we're going to be considering for two different committees tonight. Uh, it is, I've checked with the town council, and you can be appointed to more than one committee. Uh, so it's certainly within our, our jurisdiction to be able to mm -hmm. make appointments to more than one committee. Mm -hmm. So for the Human Services Committee, these are two terms, both ending June 30th, 2018. We have Pamela Harting Barat and Alexander Sis. Uh, Ms. Harting Barat. Dr. Harting Barat, sorry. Hey. You can call me Pam. Okay. Uh, so I'll start out by saying I have no family that lives in Falmouth. We've been here since September 1st. <laughs> I've been having public service withdrawal, and um, I had gone to the selectman's office because I was curious as to if there were any board openings. I was encouraged by the town manager's secretary, your secretary, to apply for some positions, and I said, well, I, I haven't been here very long, um, but I've certainly served in my prior community where we lived for 40 years and where 38 consecutive years <laughs> I was on town boards and I as I said I've been suffering withdrawal so I decided <laughs> to to come and uh, plead my case um, and I have to say this is you know I, I always believed that every town had an overlay and you could find the same sort of counties and characters in each town. But I have to tell you that I have never felt as welcome and as comfortable in a community as we have felt here. And which makes me even more so want to serve. So in terms of the Human Services Committee, um, I have not ever seen a community that does what Falmouth does for its residents. And we in my prior life in Acton um, had something so small compared to what you have. And whether you know it or not, you should be a model for every community in this Commonwealth because you do the kind of outreach that most communities don't either know how to do or just don't do it. And the fact that you can afford to spend $84,000 on some nonprofits Acton has, happens to have a united way, and they take care of most of those nonprofits. But the fact that you do outreach for everything known to human services is astounding to me. And having been in the mental health field my entire life, except for my <laughs> years at EPA, I won't mention my answer right here, but um, you know, it's just, uh, I'd be honored, basically. And I, I think I, I, uh, I think I would have some knowledge of the workings of the town as well as my passion and my compassion to serve on a board. And I'll answer your question right off. <laughs> I would like to think that the reason I was elected over and over again, because I'm the peacemaker. I'm a little bit conflict aversive, but I do mediation and I do conflict resolution. So it's, and, and actually we haven't, I, I haven't served on a very contentious board. Um, which I've been fortunate not to, um, but I think I could handle it. Um, Just to be clear, Ms. Moffitt is not talking about our board being contentious. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I noticed you were on the Board of Select and, and acting for, uh, I guess, two a different terms time. for yes. quite a few years. Mm -hmm. Right. Mr. Jones is correct in his statement. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions uh, for Pam? Yeah, Ms. Moffitt. Um, would you consider running for as a, a town meeting member? I think once I got to know my community a little bit better, and um, I would, yes. <laughs> I would. Okay, at, at some point. I will tell you that when I read, when I read your application and I realized you had only been here since September, and then I was looking at all the things that you accomplished before you arrived. Uh, and then you had the sentence of, I have withdrawal. It all made sense. 
because I think that that is just probably part of your makeup that you're giving and you're on committees and you continue to give. And you were stopped at that when you arrived in Falmouth and now you'd like to get started on it again. But you, you have quite a background in your application and I was quite impressed with as much as you have done. Thank you. And then I would say I think it is terrific that in a very short time you were gutsy enough to stand in front of us and say I'd like to be on one of those committees and before you really knew as much as you're going to learn about Falmouth. So I give you a lot of credit for that. Thank you. Other questions? No, I would just say uh, welcome to Falmouth and um, look forward to putting you to work. <laughs> That's your problem. <laughs> That's my problem. <laughs> so thank you very much for applying. Um, I think you. you could be a valuable resource. I would say. Have you had an opportunity to be at the Falmouth Service Center yet? Only, uh, only contributing things. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, have you actually okay. seen been inside, seen it yet? Oh, we, we have taken many, many carloads and spent quite a bit of time. Oh, okay. And not too many places reject a small stain. And I didn't realize there was a small stain on a sheet. And I was alerted to that and immediately, you know, pulled it back. And I thought, I wouldn't accept something like that either. And nor, and then I felt very guilty that I had even brought it in. So yes, we have been there many, many times. We had something similar in our town that was started by just a couple. And uh, it grew to be an enormous, enormous asset to the community and to all communities, because they, anyway, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. another story. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next we'll hear from, make sure I'm saying, is it Alexander Sis or? Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, I have spent 40 years in healthcare management, in hospital administration at St. Luke's Hospital in New York. I got my central level of assistant vice president. I had a three-year commitment at Children's Hospital Boston, and I was for five, five years the vice president at Falmouth Hospital. So I'm familiar with healthcare. I've also been involved in practice management, and I tell people, the longer I'm in healthcare, the more I'm beginning to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if I had to categorize healthcare in one word in this country, it's greed. Um, I got a letter from uh, Karen Cardera, with whom I worked when I was at Falmouth Hospital. She's a social worker at Falmouth Hospital. I got to know her, got to work with her. Uh, I also got involved in three different hospitals with social services and psychiatric services. So I'm familiar with, with the whole process, including the needs for mental health care uh, in this community and a lot of other communities. I got a letter from Karen Cardera asking if I might be interested in serving on their board at Falmouth Human Services. And I told her yes. And she recommended that I submit my application. And I sent my application in with three letters of reference. Um, two of them, I think, for, for our, I know who uh, are members of the Falmouth Democratic Town Committee, where my wife and I have been members for a long time. By the way, I've been a re resident of Falmouth for more than 25 years. Um, and so uh, there are two members uh, who are officers of the Falmouth Democratic Town Committee and one other person I worked with in a couple of other committees who was also, I also know through the Falmouth Democratic Town Committee. And uh, so I'm familiar with what's going on in this town because I also have a master's degree in political science and I've been involved with politics for a very long time. So I understand the politics of this town, sometimes for better or for worse, but I think everybody up here can probably say the same thing about the way politics works in this town or sometimes doesn't work in this town. But Fel uh, Karen recommended that I consider joining the board at Falmouth Human Services. I'd be very happy to take that position and to work with her and other members of the board on the needs 
and I know that housing is one of the needs. In fact, I have a copy of a letter that was sent by the Falmouth Housing Authority to Karen that talked about housing needs. I served on the Affordable Housing Committee and also the uh, uh, Falmouth Human Services, uh, uh, Housing uh, Services Committee. So I know the situation involving housing in Falmouth, the needs. I know that there's a lot of people in Falmouth who are homeless and need housing and need support services. So I'm prepared to work with a human services organization in any way I can to help what the, what the people in this town need and what the town needs. So if there are any questions you, can, you want to have for me, I'd be happy to try to answer them. I mean, questions for No, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I guess we're questioned now. I think you answered it. <laughs> okay. well, Mr. Patterson. No, I thought, okay. I, I think you're an excellent candidate, and I'm glad we have two positions this time and two mm -hmm. applicants so we don't have to struggle to differ. <laughs> <laughs> and two applicants that are bringing very different perspectives and, yes. and backgrounds. And well, I, I, I try not to present struggles for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Is this two motions this time? I think we can do it in one motion because yeah, we... I, yeah. Well, I move that we uh, accept the application of Pamela Harding... Oh, oh, all right. Appoint uh, Pamela Harding Garat and Alexander Ziss to the uh, uh, Human Services Committee. Second. Term ending June 30th, 2018. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed to none. Welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have an agenda to consider uh, putting Pam to the Affirmative Action Committee. We do not have on our agenda the listing for the interview for the Affordable Housing Committee, so we officially cannot consider that tonight because it's not posted on our agenda. But if you come back, we may have a different question about the Affirmative Action Committee. If you could tell us who you are and your background. <laughs> uh, we'll skip that part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, different question for uh, Pam for the Affirmative Action Committee. Ms. Poffer? Tell me what you know about the Affirmative Action. Well, I grew up in Maryland. My parents moved from New York City. Um, I was quite young. Uh, if you can contrast back in the 50s, what was going on in Maryland, which was totally segregated, versus New York City, which was totally integrated. My parents were raging liberals, and I think it was culture shock for them. And because my parents were relatively colorblind, quite colorblind, it was very important to them that they raise my brother and I in the very same way. We had crosses burned on our lawn when my mother was on the city council, fighting to do away with segregation. Spiro Agnew was always the dissenting vote that kept Maryland integrated, I mean segregated. And uh, I think I've had some very different experiences from New Englanders in general who, it's very different here. I think you know your friends right off the bat here. It's much more covert in other states, especially south of the Mason-Dixon line, and they prided themselves on being south of the Mason-Dixon line. And so it's very important to me that all people are treated equally and allowed the very same opportunities. I don't want to sound too much like Bernie, but um, it's true. I mean, I, I, I just think, you know, I look at the schools, and I looked, having been 12 years on the school committee, I looked to see what your ratios were and if you had how many, for example, African-American students you had and how many African-American teachers you had. And that was a little surprising to me. Um, but housing here is not inexpensive. So there's always that struggle. How do you bring people of color to a community that's expensive? Um, and that sort of brought me into the whole realm of affordable housing because as a selectman, we dealt with the affordable housing with the 40Bs and the LIP proposals and pushed very hard to get as many affordable housing units as we could. 
But anyway, so call me a bleeding liberal heart. I, you know, whatever you would like to choose. But I just feel that there's a need for that. We, I, I was at several meetings. We've joined No Place for Hate, and we did join the Democratic Town Committee, um, and some other committees in town. And we did hear from someone who spoke about a young Muslim man walking into a barber shop here in Falmouth. And because he was a male, he couldn't be touched by a female. And it was a husband-wife, I guess, barbershop. I don't even know where it is or anything else other than it's in Falmouth. And the woman said, I can, I can take care of you. And this gentleman said, I, no, you can't. I can't be touched by a woman. Her husband then came out from the back and explained what had happened, and he asked the man to leave the shop. And when I heard the story, it just sort of, this is, <laughs> this is 2016. How can that happen? He was clearly, you know, he was Muslim. He said, I'm Muslim, and I, I and explained it well. So anyway, I noticed that you had vacancies in that committee. And again, I think it's Carolyn is the secretary. Is your secretary? Yep. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, apply. Just apply for as many committees as you would like. So I, mm -hmm. I went through them, and I, you know, housing is very, I'm a passionate housing person. But this committee also strong, I mean, strung my heart cords. So heart cords? Whatever. Um, you know what I mean. So that was why I put my name in for that committee. Can I share a personal time? I taught in Glen Burnie, Maryland, previous oh to 1960, God. when it was segregated. And I was also there in 1960, when it was integrated. Right. And I have many experiences with the children coming into our school who, in the previous year, were not allowed. So when I heard that story, I thought, my goodness, that's exactly how it was. So that's personal, and I won't say any more. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> any other questions? No, but I grew up in D.C. in those years when it was segregated. Well, I'm born and, and raised so, in Maryland, too. So. So. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I, I started something. <laughs> We're not all like that. <laughs> so we, we do understand. Mm -hmm. And it must yeah, do the do. same. I mean, you must have those same, you know, yeah. cerebral yeah. feeling of, you know, how, how can this continue? Well, you the know, conductor so. of the streetcar wouldn't move the streetcar until I sat in the front because the back was for black people and the white people had to sit up front. And I like to sit in the back because I like the window. And he would not move the car until I moved up. I was 10 years old until I moved up front. So, yeah. Well, my was, most uh, vivid memory, and then I'm leaving this podium, was when I was about six years old and I went to a department store with my parents. And I was just starting to read, but I really didn't know what I was reading, but there was clearly white and colored. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was the term. And some man just grabbed me when I went to the wrong fountain. And I, I was just flabbergasted. My, my mother was there, and she was irate. And she told me I could go back and choose whichever water fountain I wanted. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I stayed with the one I was with. <laughs> Any other questions? Interesting mm -hmm. no. All, right. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we do have a deliberation here because we have three different terms on different dates ending, and so we have to decide which of the three dates we want to appoint, I assume, uh, Pam to. Well, I move we appoint Pam to the term ending excuse me, June 30th, uh, 2018. Second. Motion mm -hmm. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, mm -hmm. and the eyes have it. And that's two done. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll wait a, 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 few, a few weeks to see how that goes before we yeah. Yeah. go for all three. But thank, you thank you very much. All right, our next item is to discuss uh, use of town property by nonprofit other groups and the fee waiver policy. And we have uh, the policies we've had in the past. I also drafted a few little changes for the, particularly dealing with the waiver and exemption pages. But you have all of that together with you. Um. Yeah. Yep. I made a big issue the last time about exemptions and waivers, and you know, being really almost the same thing.
but I was really thinking about this. I thought maybe we could just make some standard exemptions that certain groups, like recurring events like the road race, that, ever, that we would automatically give exemptions to certain groups. And then, and then people could apply for waivers as time goes on. I mean, if there, and I, I didn't make the list. I just, I didn't want to go through all the work. I don't know how many there would be. But the road race, the farmer's market. I would not put the road race on there as a waiver. No, I'm saying as an exemption. I wouldn't do, I mean. Well, I'm just bringing the recurring events that we, um, that we approve each year, uh, that we consider them, that they could be considered exempt and maybe only have to be reviewed every three years or something like that. I don't know, it's just an idea. But it was a way to differentiate between an exemption and a waiver. Well, when, when I drafted, we just I, I, use the one term, I just use one period. word. Just use mm -hmm. the word waiver. Mm -hmm. As I read through it, there are two different kinds of fees. One are the dealing with construction and dealing with licensing and all those kinds of fees that are considered the general fees. Mm -hmm. And that policy has nothing to do with the special events. And that the language I stuck with that was fairly similar to what it had been before. Um, that municipal and school projects generally are waived. Uh, some of the affordable housing projects are waived under certain circumstances. Um, I think that that stays fairly consistent with what was done in the past. I don't mm -hmm. see a reason to change that one. The one that might be more are the special events ones, and this is where I think you're talking about the recurring mm -hmm. ones. And whether we have two different kinds of recurring events. One is one that happens every year, and one that happens multiple times in one year. I do think that once we've established a policy for an event, from one year to the next, the town manager can approve it without our having to reapprove it, which I think is what your point was, Mrs. Flynn, that once it's in the process, it can continue to be that way. Um, the purpose of the fees is not a money maker for the town. Mm -hmm. If it were a money maker for the town, I think we would complete, mm -hmm. have a completely different fee structure. Mm -hmm. um, but just making sure that we are both having the <coughs> costs of the use of the property being covered by the users and also having it be a level of responsibility done by the applicant. And that was the reason why I felt for the recurring ones to come up with a more standard policy of the first and last they pay and then that there is a flexibility on our part to grant up to a 75% discount for multiple days. But I do think, for instance, right now the fee is $100 a day. I do think any of these multiple ones, to have them pay $25 a day does help to defray some of the costs that are automatically going to happen with the use of the multiple use of these spaces. I think to go to the full fee for some of these multiple ones then becomes cost prohibitive and it's not going to be able to happen <coughs> some events that we would like to have happen. On that, can I make a point on sure. that? Um, I think the thing to balance is the number of events because you know for example we we had um one of the churches have multiple events at um a beach venue and i was just thinking now if, if every church in town decided to do the same number of, of events it you know it would be um you know it would sort of crowd out the, the folks that were here at the last meeting which said you know i was trying to use the beach and I was kicked off by that. It happened to be a wedding group that that kicked off uh, Jim. But I'm I'm just I'm just thinking we really have to think broad scope and we have to think into the future because all of the points that you've just made I think are very well taken and I think the uh, the you know kind of the the framework is right on. Ms. Buffett? I think I brought this up um, at our last meeting. I'm very strong about the profits and the nonprofits, And I do believe when someone comes into our town and uses our facilities and, uh, and it's for profit and then they go back to their area, I'm very strong about I would never grant a waiver. If you're, if you're in town to um, make so much money on whatever your activity is, I do not believe you should have a waiver if you're for profit. And I don't think the policy that I have gives any option for profit or for profit organizations 
it will nice. certainly tell you how I'm going to vote. Oh. I mean, if it's not listed as such, I then it's not listed. But I do believe that there are organizations that come in and and um, and we tell them it's all right and leave town and that's. So the only, according to this, for special events, the only ones that can be granted are an event providing broad community benefit and sponsored for charitable purposes may request a free waiver. Well, that's it. That sponsor must. Which page are we on now? There's like 15 pages here. Right Which one, daily fees? Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Any recurring okay. events may be granted discount of up to 75% of the daily charge excluding the required first and last days upon application to the Board of Selectmen. The Board will consider the cost of maintenance of the facility, the public benefit of the event, and the public disruption caused by the event. And so a profit organization that came in and wanted to do a recurring event mm -hmm. does have the leeway to apply for that, for the discount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you and I would agree there's no way we're going to give them a discount for it. You're making money off of it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. But there is a little bit of a loophole that yeah, for that yeah. recurring event, if we had a profit organization coming in, could do that. But if it's a one-time event for profit, there is no loophole that says a, a profit organization could be granted a waiver. Okay. Okay. Some of the issues that did come up, that I did not put to this policy because I saw them as more fee structure, and typically we do that in a fee hearing in the fall, uh, concerning the weddings and mm -hmm. whether, according to the way I read the policy, if someone has a wedding at our beach and wants to use our parking lot, mm -hmm. they really should be charged both for the use of the parking lot and for the use of the beach. And we have that fee listed right now as two separate fees. Okay. And I think uh, I would encourage that we actually go ahead and enforce that policy that we have and say, yep, if you want to use both, if you want to just use the beach and not use the parking lot, that's your option. And in the future, I wouldn't mind increasing the fee for the wedding for residents a little bit and increasing the fee for non-residents quite a bit. Saying so if you're a non-resident and want to come to use our okay. beach, um, mm -hmm. you're actually get, still going up to $400 would be way cheaper than they're going to get for almost any other kind of venue. Mm -hmm. um, but for residents, I say, all right, we're happy to have our residents be able to use it. Uh, but again, those are things that I would see in our, for the fall, for up the next summer. I don't think it's appropriate to do those changes for this summer for those people who haven't applied yet. Right. And not hope for the people who already have applied. No, I don't think we can do that for this summer. Okay. That's good. It does mean with the discount it is going to lead it up to the events that come back over and over again you know that come multiple times to have to apply and ask can we have a discount of this um, I didn't think it was appropriate to come up with a policy that was going to sort of be set in stone and not have to come back to this but there will have to be that discussion for the three or four organizations that do have recurring events well, whether you have one event or you have six events, whatever it is that you have created for the town that they have to pay for whatever it might be using whatever piece of property they're using, that cost is still there. So if you do it once, the cost is there. You do it six times, the cost is there six times. Yeah. So I think that, that as we're thinking about the facilities that is offered, to anyone using any of the property. You think of the police department, the fire department. Um, there's a lot of other costs to the town that aren't always listed and so evident, but it still costs us money. And uh, the two issues I have with that, one is I think an organization that comes to the same place 10 weeks in a row, mm -hmm. it isn't as costly as that first time and maybe the last time that some of the other costs are built in a little bit. And then the issue is we can then decide, well, it's up to us. We actually say, nope, this organization is costing us about the same each time. Mm -hmm. They're actually tearing up the, the dirt. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of cleanups happening. Nope, actually, we're not going to give any discount. It's $100 okay. every single time. And that leaves it in our hands to make a determination based on 
partly what the public benefit may be to have the event there, and partly maybe how does this group treat the facility? That's it. That's exactly it's, it. It's it an is. incentive. Yeah. Yep. It, it, so I, mm -hmm. I think that's the, it's a really, um, I think, beautiful balance between, you know, accommodation and, you know, uh, an opportunity for the board to review um, on a case-by-case -case basis. Any other further discussion? Mm -hmm. Nope. Do we have anyone from the public who'd like to discuss, contribute any thoughts on this? Mm -hmm. uh, just partly because you are here, and I knew that you were going to request a fee waiver, and I wanted to make sure you got the word that your hearing will be on the 22nd. Yes, on that. yes, okay. we do understand that. We have not brought our paperwork. Right. For that. I just wanted to clarify how this would affect how these introduce numbers. Your, sorry. Introduce yourself in public. <laughs> uh, Patricia Gadsby, I'm a member of the board of the Farmer Farmers Market. Farmer Farmers Market Inc. is a non profit. Um, I would like to check the numbers because um, last year we had a fee waiver and paid, I believe, in fees as opposed to um, sort of security and deposits. That's a separate issue. Um, 100, is that right? Um, and just on a rough calculation, it seems that we might be paying more like 700 this year. Is that correct? That's, that would be what would be happening. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is quite a large hike. And uh, the discussion we had in the past few years is this year, this past year was a very much a reduction of what it should be because we knew we were moving you from Marina Park, I mean to Marina Park from Peg Noonan and said we, we were required to charge $100. Our policy last year said one day could not be waived. I think the feeling of the board actually last year is we're ready to waive the entire thing because of the move. And that was a one-year thing. We're now trying to come up with a policy that actually makes sense for all organizations, saying, you know, $25 a day for the use of that whole park, we think is reasonable and probably cheaper than actually what it costs the town to make sure that the park continues mm -hmm. to be ready on a, on a weekly basis. And so that gives us the freedom to say, you know, that's still a pretty good deal. And I understand it's a percentage increase, but um, Partly, I think that last year was a bit of an aberration as to really what was probably the most appropriate cost because we were doing our best to support the, the move and appreciating the work that was being done for that. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, in some ways, I've sort of then guaranteed it's the 75% discount, but we'll have to have that discussion <laughs> on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. No, but you're right. It was a pilot program. Mm -hmm. The farmer's market was... You know, they weren't sure how they were going to do. And it turns out it's been, from what I read and from what I visited, extremely well received. And because it, it's a well done event and organization and, you know, all professionals. So, yay yeah. so far. And I do want to commend the farmer's market for the way they handled the move and embraced it and made it, did everything they, they could to put the most positive spin on it, saying, this is better now. Whether that's exactly how they felt or not, but that's certainly what the message went out, and they made it better in every way they possibly could, and, and I, I do. Mm -hmm. um, and did appreciate how easy it was for me to get there this past summer. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the fact that fresh fish was right there also. Exactly. There, there that was, was amazing. Mm -hmm. So are we okay with um, this new policy for the event, for the fees? I'm going to move events? approval. A second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Very well done. And some of these things we will revisit when the fee policy comes back up, uh, our fee hearings. Uh, I did also talk to Mr. Hoffer and said if we are going to talk about refining the wedding policies, he would be very happy to be here and contribute his thoughts. He did say that he has never heard a complaint from anyone about the use of the beaches, uh, of weddings at the beaches, that we did hear one at our meeting last week, but no one has expressed any conflict, that there, any complaint that the weddings have gotten in the way of beach use by uh, well, that, wedding goers. That uh, might explain the fact that why he wasn't here because I thought it was most unusual that he wasn't here to give us some information 
when we're quite concerned about how our beaches are being used in the height of the season in July and August, and maybe it's he hasn't heard any complaints and he didn't have anything to report then. Well, he, he asked me to, I called him today, he called me today and asked, did I think he needed to be here? And I said, for the discussion I thought we were having on the fees, mm -hmm. I did not think it was necessary for him to be here. Okay. But if we had the discussion on a future meeting on that, I would ask him to be here for that. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Right. Next to the vote, the articles and execute the warrant. This is the April 2016 annual town meeting and the special town meeting. You will note that quite a few of the articles are put forward uh, from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, we do have a few petition articles, a few CPC articles. I remind you that our job is really to put them on the, art on the warrant. Uh, any of the ones that we're putting forward, of course, we could change and make edits tonight. Uh, there will be quite a few that will be during our vote on motions and recommendations, be adding actual numbers into them and uh, in our recommendations, making things a little bit more um, concrete and specific. Okay. Mr. Chairman, could I make yep. one uh, comment, if I uh, please? At the uh, April annual, um, the first item, uh, obviously, you have a special town meeting as well. On the uh, proposed, what is listed currently as proposed Article 6, on uh, some deletions from the zoning bylaw. Uh, town planner Brian Curry contacted me to advise that um, this is actually a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen from town planner that these uh, several definitions are no longer needed because of the, the, as noted, the signs are no longer regulated in the zoning bylaw rather than coming from the planning board. So uh, it would be appropriate if selectmen are so willing to note that this would be on request of the Board of Selectmen, and it would be a streamlining of uh, that modest portion, uh, the definition portion of the zoning bylaw. Okay. I'll make a motion that that change be made. Do you want to put Articles 1 through 6 on the warrant? And with that do it change? in order? We we'll usually do it page by page. Sure. So yes. we have a motion and a second. Second. And a second to add Articles 1 through 6 to the warrant with the correction of As the planning board being changed to Board of Selectmen on Article 6. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Page 2 deals with Articles 7 through 11. Is it appropriate to ask a question? Sure. Okay. With respect to Article 10, I'm just not um, sure I recognize that gift of land abutting Chappaquiet Road, said land to be now under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen. I'm just wondering why and where that piece of land is. For what purpose? Right. <laughs> That's my question. The, that, is, that is related to, uh, that is a process uh, Town Council and the Associate Town Council have been working on with uh, that association that it is a requirement uh, related to a uh, state statute to allow, uh, to require a gift of land to uh, to allow public access. Is it for and the dredging or? I believe it is related to dredging. Uh, I don't have the full explanation from Frank on that, but it would be forthcoming as part of our presentation to the board. And there'll be a map, obviously? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sam? I'd like to back up to the table on Article 8. Yep. Um, under Emerald House, uh, revenue source payments in lieu of rent, and where, what, what, where's, what's the origin of those payments? That's a great question, uh, Slecken Patterson. This predates my arrival as town manager. The um, revenue um, established for uh, support of the Emerald House, uh, but I know this is not a change that's been ongoing uh, for many years. And uh, I'll be happy to uh, answer that question uh, unless one of the other members of the board might know. Well, I, I, can t I do remember when town meeting um, um, took ownership of, of the Emerald House. Mm -hmm. You probably do too. I mean, it was a big deal at the time. But, and it was always going to be used for the benefit of, um, of what it is now, like a thrift shop. And because we had to um, pay for some expenses on the roof, I know there was a an issue with the roof, but it's a town-owned building, right. and so uh, they don't—they col collect money for uh, what people pay 
for the goods and services. And I imagine what they do is they probably contribute money to the town in lieu of paying rent. In other words, the, the people who operate the thrift shop, instead of renting it, they just make payments to the town. Well, they make payments to the revolving fund. To, yeah, to the so revolving fund. So it's not coming fund. to the general right. fund. So it, mm -hmm. it's ju it, it yeah. is a little bit of an expedited fund. So the, the money right. goes into the Emerald House revolving fund. They can spend up to $28,000 to maintain the building without having to go through the process of it actually coming into the general fund, then being approved, appropriated by a town meeting, and then move forward. Right. right. Sorry. Yes, thank you. So both motions? Sure. Okay, so motion to approve 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So motion and second to add Articles 7 to 11 to the warrant. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. Articles 12 and 13 are dealing with classification and administration plan changes. I, I just have a question on 13, um, where it says, where, under the first one, the parking attendant beach, it's really to um, change the starting salary for a parking attendant. Isn't that what it is? Yeah, but it, it, does it actually remove a position from the plan and then insert it again at a higher entry fee, entry salary or yeah, hourly rate? Technically, it, yeah, it, the, I and guess it, the basic protocol is yeah, they're you're all removing the same one way. and adding another one, and but they're not, all they're really changing is the, is the, the hourly rate. Is the hourly rate, and it's an attempt mm -hmm. to remain competitive in the era of oh, yeah. I'm, I'm higher just, minimum wage, although I want to clarify, the minimum wage does not apply to municipalities. Right. So that is not a requirement, however, to be competitive with our seasonal employees. I, I've just never to, seen it put this way. Usually it says increase the minimum wage from 725 to 825. You don't delete a position and add a new one. I've just never seen it that way before. Yeah, because we weren't I mean, attributing it solely to the minimum wage, that's why we were didn't include that language, to the best of my knowledge, but that's the way the personnel crafted it. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. yeah, it was just a little di difficult to understand yeah, at I first. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I understand what you mean. Ask a question about uh, caretaker parks. Is that a part-time or full-time position? Um, it's a seasonal position. Seasonal, right. Yeah, okay. these are all seasonal positions only. Mm -hmm. Motion to add Article yeah. 12 and 13 to the board. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. Mr. Chairman, just to make sure I didn't mislead the board, Article 12, of course, are year round full time positions yes. for water and wastewater. Right. Yes. No, Article 13 right. were the seasonal ones. Yes. Thank you. And no deletions in Charles. Mm -hmm. Those are just both ads. Yes. And Mr. Those Chair, I had a question on Article 21. Okay. Perhaps the town manager might know. Um, does the enabling legislation for the CPC provide for expenditures for administration? Do you know? Uh, yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay, and so this would be okay within that legislative mandate. Correct. Okay, thank you. But I guess do you have to do this every year? Apparently. Really? That's, Each year? that's my Why understanding. Really? I don't think it can be done permanently. Oh, no. and, and the CPC, as you may know, engages the services of a consultant right. and a clerical a secretary, et cetera. So they're couched within this article. And I assume a number of these articles, like 14 and 16, will have, uh, at least 14, will have a lot more information with it on our recommendations. Oh, yes. Uh, four, 14, of course, is the FY 2017 budget, budget so right. there will be much more information provided on that, the absolutely, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, and all of these. This, this merely affirms the board's willingness to place these on the warrant, mm -hmm. and uh, much staff work will be forthcoming, uh, including maps uh, and uh, appended material to, uh, to complete this and make it uh, okay. clear. So, mm -hmm. can we do Articles 14 and 23? I'll so, make a motion to... Put articles 14 through 23 on the board. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ms. Moffitt, that's a question first. Uh, would you say your motion again, please? Motion to put article 14 through 23 on the board. And we're not doing 24 no, then so because that's not done. Done. It goes on to the next page. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. Oh, I see. Article 24. So a fairly lengthy one. This is a request from the Board of Health. This is I adopting a bylaw for dealing with the uh, sale distribution recession consumption of synthetic marijuana and synthetic marijuana analog. I move that we place Article 24 on the warrant. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion is second to place Article 24 on the warrant. All those in okay. favor say uh, yep. Can I just speak to this? I, I mean, and having attended a number of the Board of Health meetings, I mean, this is really infra based on information coming out of other municipalities' history, and they're trying to add off the problem, and it feeds right back into the whole issues of opiate abuse and addiction and starting people off at a very early age. Um, so this is an attempt to try to curtail that because these are currently not regulated drugs at all, but they're coming in and they're being sold in relatively small stores and what have you. And it's, uh, it hasn't received a lot of attention, but it has a, it's having a significant impact on people, particularly youth. And so that's why the Board of Health is taking the initiative to try to get this out there, and I hope that it gets some exposure at town meeting so that more people, more members of the community will be aware of it. It's, a, it's, it's more of a problem in the Hyannis area right now, and uh, the Hyannis, uh, it's, it's commissioners, right? Uh, What's the town organization in High Ennis? It's, it's, not, it's not the town meeting. It's, it's, it's not the oh, selection. the town council. The town council has actually adopted a similar piece of legislation for High, for high Ennis and Barstool. So mm -hmm. just a little bit of explanation. Okay. We have articles 25. Uh, these are some Tisha mm -hmm. articles. No, we need to we vote, need vote on 25. Oh, we all have a motion in a yeah. second. Yeah, all those in favor of putting Article 24 on the warrant? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. Ayes have it. We have four petitioner articles, Articles 25, 26, and 27, and 28. Motion to add Articles 25 through 28 to the warrant. Second. second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor say aye of adding Articles 25 to 28 to the warrant. Aye. 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 Opposed? No, you guys have it. Okay, we'll now move on to the special town meeting. Mr. Mr. Chairman, could yep. I make an introductory comment? Pardon Absolutely. me uh, for interrupting you, sir. Um, the articles that are currently listed as 5, 6, and 7, mm -hmm. I'm suggesting the board may want to adjust the order of those. Yes. Um, okay. And uh, minimally, I think you want to... Uh, exchange the positions of five and seven uh, the only other question is what do you want to have the uh, the article on the athletic field first or the article on the design of the senior center first um, there those are both uh, uh, obviously strategic and integral to whether or not uh, we do go forward with uh, reassigning the care and custody of the property to the board of selectmen I, I just want to make a comment about some of these articles. Um, I think they're going to, they are reflective of the concern that town meeting had the last time and that we have these major articles on town meeting that have great impacts on the community, not only for now, but for the future. I'm thinking particularly of the senior center, so-called. Um, we, we know we have an estimated cost now of 400 and some thousand a year to operate and we have no way of funding it at this current time. So I think it's really difficult to put articles like this on the warrant and expect town meeting to be able to vote them if they don't have all the information that they should have because that's exactly what they said last time. And the, I, I, I meant to, to um, um, check them off when I was reading them and I didn't, but there's at least four or five of them here that have um, serious financial implications for the town in the future. I just wanted to mention that because I think mm -hmm. we need to address it now if we're going to really do this at this town meeting. We need to either put them on our agenda at, at a regular meeting and really discuss them thoroughly so that people have a way to understand them because you can't wait till the precinct meeting and then try to explain them that they're too complicated, I think, in terms of what the commitments uh, the town meeting is going to be expected to make if they vote these. So, I mean, I have a real problem 
with the senior center because only because uh, the people that I talked to all no no one that I have talked to said that they would ever go to a senior center. And yesterday I was interviewed by someone who um, you know related to the economy of Falmouth, and she was from Virginia, and we got into a discussion about uh, senior centers. And in Virginia, the state of Virginia or Fairfax County rather, they don't even do a senior center anymore. They have areas in town where they provide certain services or certain areas where. Um, and who is a senior? That's the other question. Who is a senior today? Is a senior 55? Is a senior 65? Is a senior 85? I mean, who knows well, what the age group is. So they have various activities and places in town where people um, who you would likely call a senior would have access to. And, and, so, and it was fascinating the way the county addressed that. And, and we got to talking about what are people doing around the country? And they're not building senior centers. And here we are putting on the warrant um, an article that is going to cost us a whole lot of money down the road where we don't even know where the money is going to come from unless we do an override or unless we cut back on the appropriations that other departments have now. And we have to be ready to, to understand that, I think, if we're going to vote on it. How are we going to afford all these, these things? If, if we can't afford them now, how are we going to afford them five years from now? Where's the money going to come from? So I think that, that people in the community, we should have this discussion with them before they're all of a sudden come to a, a town, uh, to a precinct meeting and find out the scope of what it means to them as residents and taxpayers of the town. Okay. You know, so I'm not going to vote for this. Okay. And I remember what they are. Okay, I well, I, well I, I mean, I think they're, I think it's important that they go on the war because at some point, town meeting is going to have to make a decision whether they're to postpone it or not. But I mean, clearly, in my mind, seven, this, what's listed as currently Article 7, needs to be flipped with Article 5. So yes. 5 and right. 7 ought to be. Because we ought to decide right. if we're going to move forward on a senior I, center at all, which is what you're. I think, I'm, not, well, I'm not sure I, still, I have all that. It's under what? the special path. It's under the special. Here. It's articles five through seven. Oh wait a minute. Yeah. Is it here? Was it in here? This one? Well, it should be in your package. That's right. You're welcome to share with me. But it, clearly, we should be deciding if we're going to go forward with the senior center before we talk yeah. about taking over fields and then asking the school committee to relinquish control over the. The property that right, we go on. Exactly. So the order is definitely not correct, and I would recommend that we flip the proposed Article Five with Article Seven. All right. Here we are. Okay. Yeah. Here's my. Here are my notes. Um. Yeah, I have the uh, need to establish a cost on Article Five. So Article 5 would be the design of the new senior center. Right. right. Article yeah, 6. Yeah, but I think to, or to, in order to vote on the design, you have to know what, what's coming next. If you're going to vote to design it, do you have any idea what, what is the estimated cost in the future? Mm -hmm. how, what size is it going to be? And how are we going to pay for it? So I think to vote on a design without knowing the total cost down the road, where, the, where those dollars are going to come from, is a big issue. Well, we have I mean, the construction for a town meeting costs, member, uh, it's going to be. Construction costs from the consultant who <coughs> was engaged. Uh, and in the last report, the members of the board may recall, and I know that's what you're alluding to, uh, uh, Selectman Flynn, is the operating costs uh, were also shared as part of that, and they're in the $400,000 ballpark annually. Uh, and that's uh, once the facility is constructed. So I think what you're suggesting is subject the board's concurrence that all of that information that we have, even though it is not in final form, it is in that preliminary consultant's work, um, that would include what you've raised, uh, be shared, and to the extent it's uh, the board wishes, uh, discussed further. But we only have some of that information. I would see what's going to happen is if this gets approved, one of the jobs of the designer, of the architect, is to make those numbers more concrete and maybe make the building smaller and maybe make, you know, the design is not, we have a schematic. We don't have a design right now. Right. The schematic we have is roughly saying an additional $400,000 a year 
I think the job of this passes is for that building to be designed and fine-tuned to what the needs of the town are if this gets approved by town meeting yeah. and I don't I, I agree with you I don't think the schematic we were given makes financial sense for us to go forward I would rather go with a either a scaled down one or a two phase building where what they do is one phase that is going to be completely used right now that could be expanded in the future. And the other thing we have not even done is to consider Gus Canning. I mean, right now we don't, I mean, it needs to be folded into this too, um, because that's where people are going now, a lot of them during the, during the week, but if all of that is eliminated from Gus Canning and gets transferred to another facility, do we make us candy obsolete that it's only available on the, it's only going to be used on weekends? I mean, I just don't think we've had enough of that discussion of the facilities and the buildings and how they will operate in the future. We're taking it step by step, and I realize you have to get one step to get to the other steps, but to have that general discussion on the facility itself, if we do this, if we build it, what happens here, what happens there, what do we do with this, and what are the programs that the, we never got into the programmatic um, issues with the senior center, I mean, what, what kinds of programs are they planning to offer? We know you need a big meeting room, and you know you need a kitchen, but what do you need beyond that? For I, what? I disagree. I just, we've had numerous, as the chair said, we've mm -hmm. had numerous presentations. Mm -hmm. Jill has gone through. Yeah. We've had many community discussions, we've had years of outreach, yeah. years of planning, yeah. and we've progressed to the point of looking at it in detail. And right. that's what these articles do. Yeah. I think it's time to put it to the voter in the order that Mr. Yeah. Patterson suggested. Now, I agree with that, but also things evolve over time. Things change. They change rapidly. And people have different points of view as time moves on. It takes five to six years to complete a project in a town. And by the time you get to the fifth or the sixth year, uh, things, a lot of things have changed. People have changed. That's with know. every just, project you could say that. That's right. It happens with every project. Yep. Oh, but it, this one did start with a fairly major needs analysis done by uh, the, for the senior center a long time ago saying, that's right. We did agree, based on the analysis, that we need one. Yeah, that's right. Um, we can relook at that, but I. Uh, well, I mean, there's, we have another opportunity to make a recommendation on these. Yeah. All we're doing right now is saying, are we going to put this on the warrant? Right. We still have a, an opportunity to say, in depth, we recommend indefinite postponement because yeah. we don't think the community's at a point where it really quite understands what the impact is going to be and what the benefit is and how we're going to fund it all. I so so I, I think my feeling is let's, let's put it on the warrant now, but let's see between now and when we actually are, are going to make the recommendations for each of these, um, you know, what kind of information we want to come up or whether we feel like we're not ready. This is not, yeah, I really Right. Not, really, this is not the time for us to be having this debate. You're right, Mr. Preston, so. Good, good, because I absolutely disagree. Oh, I know you do. Oh, and a lot strongly. of other people will, too, but a mm -hmm. lot of people will agree. But so you, I'm only speaking for others. But you I'm did this. You myself, did this previously, you though. Excuse me. Yeah. You gave that whole speech once before, yeah. and they came back, and they answered, and they addressed. And when I go to their meetings, they address each one of the questions that come from the selectmen, and I don't know how much more they can do. Um, so that's my point. I do think in moving five and se or exchanging five and seven certainly is a common sense kind of a thing. So I'll, I'll understand a motion that we put articles one through eight on the warrant mm -hmm. with articles five and seven uh, switch position. So moved. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Opposed. You're opposed to putting the articles on the warrant? No. 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 I think it's probably a good idea to have that discussion. I just think that we need to be aware that, that the um, thinking, a lot of thinking is, is evolving. Okay. Page two of the, we have articles nine through 20. Uh, the only question, I have a question on 11 and that's, uh, it has to do with Falmouth Country Club golf course irrigation system. Mm -hmm. um, there's, 
I hope that there's going to be an explanation that tells us what percentage of the project is involved. This is the final piece. This is, the, this, mm -hmm. this yes. is going to complete? Yes, this will complete okay. the, the package of financing needed, and uh, the recommendation will come from the Finance Committee because it will be a financial article. Okay. Yeah, I guess I was mm -hmm. under the impression that this was only going to carry us you know, a fraction of the way through it, and there was still going to be more money to complete yeah. the irrigation system. Yeah. So, Good okay, question. Well, this is the last yeah. step. Okay. I have a question it's, on It's the third, I think. Yes, it's, 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 it's one of several steps. Yeah, but it is. I think it is the last one. I yeah. guess I lost track of the other two. <laughs> Can't imagine why. <laughs> Actually, I think it's the fourth, because I think we went to the CPC yeah. last fall. Yeah. We did some money last spring. We went to the CPC when it got a small bit in the fall. Yeah. And then this is the balance. I hope you're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's our intention. <laughs> I think he is. Yeah. Uh, Ted. Uh, this is funding a parking meter system. Do we have an idea what that is yet? Well, there's already $150,000 has been earmarked and set aside by town meeting and uh, with the concurrence of the selectmen and the finance committee. This is a modest supplement. It's in the twenty dollars to $30,000 range um, based upon uh, us going through some procurement uh, investigation as to what we need. So, so do we know what kind of a system? Getting rid of the dials out? and getting, what? Uh, getting rid of the crank. Meters that we have and putting down. other so types the, of meters in. The mechanical. Huh. We don't know what they are yet. Well, they're, they're, they'll be basically the same, the kinds of meters that we have now, except they'll be solar and they'll take credit cards, essentially. Oh, okay. So. But this is not talking about putting in meters in new places. This is just replacing the current meters Correct. we have with. I get it. You know, and Mr. Chairman, just to supplement, the other thing that it would allow is some uh, modest amount of additional funding to uh, acquire a couple pieces of equipment to allow the police department to do much more effective enforcement uh, on the uh, parking meters themselves and uh, save save the money, uh, excuse me, save the town some uh, labor and some additional uh, repetitive costs by using more effective tools to, to do the job. Mm -hmm. All right, I move we place Article 9 through 20 on the special town meeting warrant. Second. Motion is second to add articles 9 through 20 to our special town meeting warrant. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The ayes have it. Thank you. Individual selectman's report. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Patterson? I'll keep on my brief this time. I, I've actually attended um, Board of Health meetings and uh, com uh, Conservation Commission meetings, and one thing I would just alert you to is that the uh, alternative denitrifying uh, septic systems that uh, were slated to be put in under a grant in the West Falmouth Harbor area, those actually are moving through right now. And, uh, and there'll be several types of systems, and of course it's an evaluation process, so it was, it's kind of neat to see these things actually going through the permitting process, so to speak. Um, I mentioned that I attended, uh, well I didn't, but I attended the second Opiate Coalition uh, of Falmouth organizing meeting this past Friday, Julian was there, and. Uh, Mary Pat was there. And, and no, I don't think so. I think it was just the three of us, um, you know, taking gradual steps to actually coming up with, you know, some programs and some cooperative initiatives that, that we can actually put forth in this town to help address this uh, uh, epidemic problem, really. And that we keep finding out that it's, it's big, you know, and it's uh, something that everybody's addressing. It's not unique to Fowler by any means. Um, uh, the last thing, uh, there have been ongoing uh, finance committee meetings that have been reviewing the operating budget for FY17, um, and they've pretty much gotten through that. There's a few cleanup items on the budget, but in the, the next thing on their agenda, we'll be taking a look at each of the uh, town meeting articles and reviewing those. So they're making good progress. That's it. Mm -hmm. well. No, no, I, uh, next week. I, uh, I, uh, I, I will say I was at the Cape Cod Economic Development Council last uh, Thursday, and I had an excellent hour and a half discussion on affordable housing and the uh, Community Development Partnership, which is the Lower Cape, particularly Truro, uh, Jay Coburn, who's the, um, a, is the chair of the selectmen, I think, in Truro. Anyway, had some really good things to say, but I have pages of information, and I want to really condense it and bring it back to give you some ideas of what others on the Cape are doing, which is pretty interesting. But cool, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have two items. One is uh, a little remiss in getting you this year's uh, town manager's evaluation, which I'll be uh, sending out uh, next week. 
love to get it back by the end of February so that I can then turn it around so we can actually get that into this, you know, an earlier cycle. Um, and the second, we have received a few letters concerned about trash on the roads and it's not the right, it's not the easiest time to pick it up right now. But I'm hoping this year we might be able to make a more of a push of the Falmouth pickup day that has happened in the past. I think it was rejuvenated a little bit last year, but uh, maybe there's some way that we can continue to uh, push other people and really do our best to make the streets as people come into Falmouth look the way we want them to. Mm -hmm. Mr. Patterson? Well, I, I had a question about that because I, this, those letters were basically asking the town departments or the town employees to do something about that when really it's been primarily a, a, a volunteer effort. But I know that the sheriff's office, or the sheriff, I should say they take their prisoners out and do road duty. Mm -hmm. And I just was wondering whether we can possibly coordinate that on some of the key roads that pass through the community that probably get the most litter. We are exploring that. Uh, okay. Okay. That's don't good. have any commitment at this point. For sure. One of the mm -hmm. problems that you're you're kind of paralleling is that it's actually a lot of the state jurisdiction yes. on the roads and Sorry. ramps and highways that are really dangerous for volunteers. Mm -hmm. And so what happens even even though those um, you know those groups kind of move from one area to another and we and i know that the town manager's office the highway department they try to get to you know so it's rotated at least some of the highway ramps get picked up but it's been an ongoing issue so maybe we yeah, can know, know some people could who are contacting the town could also contact the state one of the hardest places is 28 coming into town mm -hmm. because you, it, there's no place to walk there. You can't close the road to be able to pick it up, and it's a very dangerous place to be, but it is, but it is one that we'll continue to look at ways that we can try to deal with. Town Manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, uh, as uh, Selectman Patterson noted, I, I was pleased to uh, attend the uh, second meeting of the Opioid uh, Coalition Forum. I was not able to be there all day, uh, regrettably, due to a schedule commitment, but uh, it's uh, extraordinary to have the opportunity to participate in that uh, process. I think many of us, uh, um, Selectman Patterson noted uh, how widespread this problem is, and many of us saw it mentioned uh, in the uh, aftermath of the New Hampshire primary as being a, uh, a considerable issue in that uh, in that state and many others. So this is really a national uh, concern. And uh, to Falmouth's uh, credit, um, efforts are being made to get ahead of the curve. And I think it's a, a testament to the uh, quality of the individuals we have working in so many areas to uh, uh, enhance the quality of life in the community. And I tip my hat to them. Uh, also uh, attended uh, the, the uh, most recent meeting of the Finance Committee, and uh, they continue to do uh, excellent work, and we're happy to work with them as they uh, uh, bring their uh, actions to uh, some closure in the coming month. Um, also, I wanted to note uh, for the board um, that uh, the t Town Hall and Town Administrative Offices will be closed on Monday, February 15th uh, for the President's Day holiday. And two other items, uh, I wanted to mention uh, that uh, as has been reported, uh, uh, Building Commissioner Eladio Gore uh, is retiring. Uh, the search process, uh, uh, I should say that I we will begin advertising and accepting applications uh, in the coming month of March. And that search process will include a, a formal assessment center process to assist in, in identifying the best qualified uh, individual uh, for this important position. During the transition, I do anticipate utilizing the services of a qualified person in a consulting capacity to ensure that the important work of the building department continues uh, without any delay or interruption in those important services. Uh, also, uh, I want to uh, advise that the uh, matter related to the investigation of the beach courtesy cards uh, has been completed and brought to closure. I've issued a concluding memorandum to uh, members of the Board of Selectmen, and it will remain for the Board to, to determine uh, whether to take up the matter of free parking at uh, the town beach parking lots at a later time. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, the last time on our agenda is to set a date for our joint planning meeting that we had agreed to with the uh, meeting with the planning board. Uh, we're looking for a Saturday morning in March. 
Uh, I think March 5th is out, and the 26th is a little bit too close to town meeting. So really, we're between the March 12th and March 19th. The 12th or the 19th, and uh, Mr. Chairman, in the event that there might be any desire, if I, if I might interject, pardon me, uh, on the part of the board to uh, include in some of this uh, discussion with the planning board the matter of uh, the uh, 40B uh, project proposal, which we discussed a little bit tonight, Mm -hmm. uh, that March 12th date would be a little more advantageous to give you an early opportunity. Uh, a 30-day extension, for instance, uh, were, were we to be, that be, to be confirmed, I believe, would take you to March 24th. Um, and so if you waited till the 19th, it puts you right on the cusp of that. The 12th mm -hmm. would give you a little bit uh, more time to yeah. analyze, respond. So just, just a thought there. Obviously, you have considerably more uh, items to be talking about with the planning board, but I just raise that as one of the possibilities. Just to remember, some of the items we do want to talk about in addition to the 40B um, is also the report on the Main Street, continuation of the Main Street, and what possible revisions we might be able to do there. And we also have a report from the Bikeways Committee, and those right. actually work hand in hand to be able to have that discussion with the planning board. So does March 12th? March 12th mm -hmm. works. March 12th. Yes, I agree. Yeah, it works for me. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's hope the planning board can do it. Do you want to suggest a time, uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. 9 a.m.? Yep. March 12th. Do you prefer it be a town hall or an alternative location, library or elsewhere, wherever the board's pleasure would be? It's certainly easy to meet here. I think this is fine. Yeah, very good. Saturday morning. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Should be available. I think so. We'll get the word out on that. Thank you. You said nine, right, Ty? Yep. I hope okay. I come on time this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pick you up. Okay. Hey, anything else? Motion to adjourn. Um, second. Mm -hmm. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. No, this has nothing to do with Thank the meeting.